Hello, hello, fellow gear addicts. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to celebrate uh, 1,000 subscribers. What better way to do it than uh, show off uh, what's in my bag? <laughs> That's probably a good way to get rid of subscribers, actually. Uh, it's, it seems to be a tradition of uh, all the photography channels out there to uh, kind of do a what's in my bag video. Uh, hopefully I won't be too disappointing. <laughs> so rather than uh, do it at home, I uh, decided to come out here to Golden Ears Provincial Park and uh, find a nice quiet spot and uh, go through the equipment that I'm currently uh, using and uh, perhaps you'll get something out of this. Uh, what, I, what I'm hoping to do is go through each piece of equipment and kind of give you my thoughts about um, each piece. Uh, not all of them are positive. <laughs> uh, I seem to go through quite a lot of gear and I've, well, over the past 25 odd years as a professional photographer, um, I've accumulated a, a lot of gear. <laughs> Uh, some of it I've got rid of and uh, some of it I've kept and some of it I'm still using now. So without uh, too much delay, what I want to start off with is uh, the current uh, bag that I'm using or pack. Now, over the years, I've gone through a whole plethora of camera bags uh, and I still have many of them at home. Um, what I, most of them I just use for storage now. Uh, I started off actually with this bag here. Uh, now in North America, this is called a fanny pack, but for you guys that are watching in the UK, that might be a little offensive. So I'll just call it a, call it, um, a hip pack. <laughs> I bought this now over 25 years ago now, and I still use it. Uh, I use it to store lenses. Uh, but what I use it for mostly is if I'm backpacking, especially if I'm going for multiple day trip. Currently the pack I'm using to carry all my tent and uh, other equipment uh, isn't really large enough for multi-day trips. So what I end up doing is using this to carry my camera body and lens and then I have a little bit more room in my backpack. Uh, it's a pretty good pack. Uh, you can't fit an awful lot in there like I'm lucky if I can fit a, a DSLR with one lens maybe but it's it's been a, a good pack now low pro I have a lot of low pro packs and um, to be honest with you the earlier packs uh, I wasn't terribly keen on but that was all that was really available that was rugged uh, first of all I found them to be extremely heavy uh, they relied heavily on zippers and actually one of the packs that I had, I had a Super Trekker, which was the biggest pack, it was almost as big as me. Uh, it relied heavily on zips and uh, I, I remember distinctly on one trip, I was carrying all my 4x5 stuff and I was in the middle of nowhere and the zip broke and there weren't any straps over the zip so I was hooped. So I ended up carrying the pack <laughs> like this for the trip home, which wasn't great. Uh, now they have improved vastly but I still find the low pro packs uh, a little bit heavy. Actually most of the photo packs I, I find they, they just have way too many straps and, and way too many pockets uh, but that's just my own personal preference. Uh, I know some people like all that stuff. Now currently um, I'm just using this to, to store a lens and I'll talk about that lens a little bit later. Uh, another low pro pack that I have that I'm still using and I've I've had it for a long time now And it's looking a little bit worse for wear is this one here I think this was the one of the first photo trekkers and actually I, I bought this off a friend of mine uh, She sold it to me for like 40 40 or 50 bucks was which was a hell of a deal But I still use it now what I use it for mostly now is <laughs> to store uh all my bits and pieces that I'm not using. So I might keep this in my vehicle. Uh, if there's somewhere I go and I, and I might need that piece of equipment, then, you know, it's, it's in, my, in my van. And I'll go over some of the, the, the things that I have in here a bit later. Right now I have a, uh, one of the F-Stop um, ICUs. This is the small one from my old pack, uh, which is what I'm gonna talk about now. Okay, now then, up until uh maybe three or four weeks ago 
I was using this pack here. This is the F-Stop Tilopa. Uh, now this is the older version. Uh, it's a 50 liter pack and uh, I've had it for maybe five or six years. And it's been a really great pack. The, the, the main reason why I bought this pack uh, was the entry through the back of the pack. I just thought that was a genius idea. For me, a lot of times you, you're in mud and muck and water and with a lot of the, the older low packs, you know, you'd put them down and of course you'd put them down on the back, the part that went up against your back to open up the front. And of course, then when you went to put the pack on, it'd either be wet or filthy or, or whatever. So this was a, a, a brilliant idea by them. And that was the main reason why I bought this pack. Now, if you get down to the bare elements of this pack, really, it's, it's just a, a backpack. Um, it's no different than any other pack that's out there, except that it has the rear entry, in my opinion, anyway. The ICU is a great idea. I bought two of them, but of course I, I only ever used the one, which was the large. And it's, it's served me quite well. It's looking a little bit worse for wear and it's got a few holes in that. The one big issue with, with this pack though that I had, um, and it's, a, it's quite a negative one, were the straps. Now, I'm, I, I'm sure that they've improved the straps uh, over the years, but pretty much every strap on this pack broke. Now, I, I'm not really sure if it was just faulty webbing or um, I'm not sure, but all of the, um, like the side straps here, the, the compression straps on the sides uh, broke. The, the straps for the, for the hip pad on the sides here broke. The, uh, the loop at the top here broke. These broke. These I, I actually had replaced by a guy that just happens to live down the road from me who makes a gear for the police, like bulletproof vests and so on. And uh, he fixed it for me. But basically, you know, I pretty much lost confidence in this pack because I didn't want to end up in the middle of nowhere again with one of these straps broken because then I'd be hooped again. I'd be carrying it around like this. Now I did email F-Stop and uh, they were pretty good about it. They said, well, you know, if you send us the, um, the, the original invoice and some pictures of the webbing, then we'll, we'll do something about it. Now, you know, I, I mean, I don't have the invoice from five, six years ago. I did send them pictures and I haven't heard back yet, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, it was a good pack. The other thing that I, I did have a bit of an issue with, and I know there's quite a bit of R&D that goes into these things, is the price. For, for us living in Canada, you know, this pack is three or $400 uh, US, and you know, that, that ends up being a, a heck of a lot of money once we pay duty, exchange, shipping. I just don't think that this pack is worth that amount of money. So I started to look for an alternative pack. The Low Pro, uh, I think it's called the Whistler, is quite a nice looking pack. But again, it, 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 for my uses, I think it has way too much in it. It has too much padding, uh, just too much going on with that pack um, and plus it's it's extremely expensive i just want a simple pack without tons of frills that i can carry my gear in okay so what am i using as a replacement well i am um, about the time that i i emailed uh f-stop i thought you know what i'm going to start looking for a different pack and i was thinking of buying a new f-stop bag because i'm sure that their webbing issues have been resolved um, but again, the, the price was just like, uh, it's a little hard to swallow. Anyway, I just happened to be in, a, in an outdoor store, a local outdoor store called Atmosphere. And uh, I came across uh, this pack here. Now this is an Alpine pack made by Mammut, which is a Swiss company, I believe. And um, it's the same size as a 50 liter pack. Uh, but what I noticed about it straight away was that it has the uh, rear entry that I really, really like in a pack. Uh, it opens up very nicely. Now I thought, okay, this pack is a little bit narrower than the F-stop bag. It's five centimeters narrower. So I thought, well, am I going to be able to get the ICU in from the old pack? And sure enough, it fits. Now, it is a, li a little tight, I'll admit that. So if you're one of these people that have an F-stop bag and you're looking for something 
an alternative or something new and you're a person that, that does up the inner zip all the time, on, like on the ICU, uh, then this might not be the bag for you because you'd have a difficult time zipping that up all the time. I never did up the inner zip for the ICU, so it doesn't bother me once, one bit. And as far as opening it up, it's a little bit tight, but it seems to work fine. Um, it, the other alternative is I looked on Amazon and there's a bunch of different um, inserts that you can get from various off-brand or third-party companies that I'm sure would fit in here quite nicely. Uh, it doesn't Velcro in here like the F-stop, but I mean, it's so tight in there, it's not, it's not going to come out anyway. So the, uh, the zip is definitely, or the, the opening on the back is definitely a great feature. And the other great thing about this pack was the price. Uh, I could, you can't beat the price. It was $189 Canadian. So that ends up being about uh, $150 US. Now, granted, it doesn't come with the ICU, but I don't believe these packs do either. You have to buy that extra. So... Uh, as far as comfort goes, it's very comfortable. Uh, Mammut make pretty pretty good alpine equipment. It does have an internal frame, uh, same as this pack. The only real difference is it doesn't have as many pockets. So if, if you're a person that loves lots of pockets to put stuff in, then again, this might not be the pack for you. Uh, the top is a little bit different in that it doesn't have a zipper. It's just a regular, uh, you know, lift up top here. And that's, you know, if you want to carry climbing ropes and stuff like that. The advantage for photographers, though, is that now you have an extra little bit of space to put in jackets and stuff. I did find with this pack, and maybe I should have got the, the next size up, this pack, I mean, it's great for carrying gear, but when you want to carry extra jackets, gloves, a lunch, uh, and so on, then I found it a little bit small. This, you know, it's expandable, so... You can carry extra gear if it's in the winter or if it's in the summer, then you'd have less gear. So overall, I think it's, a, it's an awesome pack. Uh, has a pocket very similar to this one here. This one has actually two pockets in the front. This just has one. So you can put um, you know, a jacket in here. Uh, as far as carrying a tripod, well, it has a couple of ISAX um, attachments here and, and the side straps. I managed to, to put my tripods either on the sides uh, or on the front. E either or, doesn't matter. Looks fine. Uh, if you're into skiing, it has a couple of ski loops, kind of the same as, as this guy, the, um, the F-stop. It's an Alpine pack. It's built to last. And um, I guess time will tell. Uh, like I said, I haven't had this very long, so but I will keep you updated on you know, if things start to fall apart or if I'm having problems with it. But so far, it's been, it's been pretty, pretty darn good. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, uh, have a serious look at this. It's called the Treon Pro.